I'll tell you what, though, when he wins, look out. I know I've said that before, but definitely look out. Well, after this first set of stops, and by the way, the both of the Ray Hall Hogan cars made their stop on the 16th lap as well, so that completes the stops for everybody. Paul Tracy is the leader of the race, never relinquished it by being able to carry onto the 17th lap, one lap further than his teammates as he made his stop. But Al Unser Jr. at the moment is in second, and that's a championship for him. Texaco Haviland 200. I'm Paul Page. We're riding with Bobby Rahal. That's Dominic Dobson in ninth place, just ahead of Rahal. Let's give you the order now. Lap 18. Here's your top positions as a result of the pit stops. And of course, the key change is there in second place. Al Unser Jr. only needs to be up in the top four or five positions if he wants to come home with a championship. He's maintained that status throughout the race. If he can stay there the remainder of the day, then we'll celebrate a new IndyCar champion at the end of the day. Let's go pit side, Jan Bikas. Well, another Walker Motorsports member that's here on pit road is Mark Smith. Mark, what put you out? Uh, it turned out that it was a uh, timing chain that broke it. At first, it felt like it was the throttle cable. Just lost drive. It wasn't violent. It just um, exiting turn three. Um, after I'd shifted up to fourth gear, it just let go. Now, you qualified eighth. You were running great here. Obviously, this is a disappointment, but why are you so fast here? You love this place? I don't know. I just kind of got a knock for high-speed road circuits, I think, and um, car was working really good, and um, you know, just found a good balance, and that's what it's all about here. Well, a great start, but an early end for Mark Smith. Paul? On board with Adrian Fernandez. Now, by the way, they've assessed a stop and go penalty to Raul Boisel. He ran over Ari Landyke's air hose as he made his pit stop, and that's a violation as well. Mandated stop and go penalty. So let's watch Adrian, who runs right now in sixth place, and take a look at the Delco Electronics telemetry on this car. Down through Hurry Downs, heading for that left-hander that turns into the carousel. And it was a Ford engine of Michael Andretti's that we looked over the last time down this long back straight. This is an Ilmore, so we may get, a see, get to see what his straight line speed is. This is the carousel. Balance the throttle. Now the blast down the back straight. Through the king. He's in top gear, and here we go. Fastest part of the racetrack. 188 is the highest we see we see here. Quite a bit slower than we saw from Michael and Reddy's Reynard earlier. Adrian Fernandez led his first IndyCar race last year, last week at Vancouver, and then ran out of fuel. What a terrible disappointment. But when we talk about those drivers up and coming and those who, when they win, should be exceedingly powerful, put his name on that list. Willie T. Ribs, the third of the Walker Motorsports cars, pulls off the edge of the course, and Willie T. climbs out. Cars uh, right at the edge of the track, right by the underpass. I don't think the corner worker is real happy with that positioning either. One of Willie's guests here this weekend, Jimmy Jam Harris, who's the producer for Janet Jackson. Taking in a motorsports weekend with Willie T. Willie going to be a backup singer now, do you think? I sure hope not, because he's terrible. Let's go pit side. Gary Gerald can give us several updates. Well, let's start with Nigel Mansell. They're now having, because of this uh, misfire in the engine, they're having some fuel economy problems. So that's an added concern for the Newman Haas team with the defending PPG IndyCar World Champion. Also, Paul, we heard the report from Jan about a blister off one of Villeneuve's tires. Al Unser's tires came off, and there was a good-sized chunk missing on one of the rear tires. We talked with one of the Goodyear engineers, asked him, is that from surface buildup? He said, frankly, he did not think so but of course they couldn't give us much more than that we talked with richard buck and he said junior had reported that the car had been the rear wing of the possibility that in one of those loose conditions he may have slid it sideways build up the heat that may have caused that blister but frankly they don't know and they're concerned about it jan gary when you talk about that blister and people are scratching their heads i just checked with tony sicali he says he doesn't think it's a blister what he thinks it is is it's the cars that are sliding they go across those chatter bumps on the exits of the corners and that may be what's actually tearing up the tires that's interesting, and I'll buy that from Tony Sicali. He's pretty observant on that stuff. Tony Sicali, of course, engineer to Jacques Villeneuve, came out of retirement because of this young man's talent. 
and he may be right. They may be just literally tearing chunks out of these tires. Now, something you mentioned Alonso Jr.'s tire, I'll guarantee you, Jr. has already been in radio contact with Roger Penske about the condition of his tires. And if he needs to take care of them, Jr. is as good as anybody out there. We're watching a battle for within the team. Pack West organization and Dominic Dobson, the 17 car in front there, runs in ninth place. His teammate, Scott Sharp, just behind him. Only battle on the circuit at the moment. Let me give you the rundown at the top of the order. As we keep an eye, Ray Hall closing in two. It's Tracy, Unser Jr., Villeneuve, top three. Then Nigel Mansell, Mario Andretti is in fifth place. Good run for Mario. Adrian Fernandez is sixth, then Fittipaldi, then Teo Fabi, and then this battle, Dominic Dobson and his teammate, Scott Sharp. Now, if the race would end now, we know it won't, but if it would, this is the way the points fight will look, and there is no question that Al Unser Jr. is the championship. What is still open for contest is second place, and everybody down through Robbie Gordon would still have a shot at moving up in the fight. So while the championship could be decided today, there's still plenty of points fight to be had. And there's another fight to be had here to be continued between these teammates. They haven't run like this very often during the season, but they are teammates, probably without team orders. Dobson and Scott Sharp. Sharp totally unfazed by that spectacular crash that he had at New Hampshire. Everybody else held their breath, and all he did was talk on the radio to his crew, but unfazed. Down on the lower elevation side of the course. Too bad that there aren't grandstands in this section of the course because a lot of good action occurs here. But nice thing about Road America, especially if you're a camper, is you can get up on the hills above this and look down on this section way below you. It's really a picturesque circuit. This track was originally a pure road course around Elkhart Lake, which is about three miles from here. And some of the turns here were made to replicate the turns in the original circuit. So at the front of the field, it is Paul Tracy, seven and a half seconds ahead of his teammate, Al Unser Jr., and Al Unser Jr. continues to be in the championship spot. Back at the Texaco Haviland 200, Road America at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Uh, on the pole, picked up the lead and has led ever since then, including through his pit stop because tactically they were able to hold his stop off one lap further. He's getting for the top position that he's running, amazing fuel economy. His fastest lap thus far has been at 132.1 miles an hour. He's averaging 128 miles an hour now, which is two miles an hour faster than the record set by Michael Andretti in 1991. The bright yellow Pennzoil car is, of course, Teo Fabi. He runs in eighth place, and just behind him, that battle continues on between Dominic Dobson and Scott Sharp for ninth place. I don't know what would happen here if Scott Sharp poked his nose down the inside. Remember, Dobbs is not only the driver here, he is also part team owner of this team. Pack West, one of the new teams, run very well by John Anderson, engineered by Alan Mertens. Of course, you remember his name with the Gallus team. I'm going to say, uh, Gary or Jan one suggested that there are no team orders here, but when that boss is in front of you, you know, there might be, he might just hold his hand up and say, just stay where we are, I'm doing very well here. I don't think so. I just don't think so. When you have young drivers like this out to try and make a name for themselves, remember their careers are in their own hands when you're in a position... Uh, to, to gain a position on the racetrack. Moving back in the field now to the 13th position on board with Stefan Johansson, who at the start of the program we indicated they've made an announcement now that he is going to be with Tony Bentenhausen and his racing organization for another two years, as will Alumax, their sponsor. So that's going to put them in a very comfortable present position to make some decisions over the next year. As part of those decisions are they're staying essentially with this program of Penske chassis and Ilmore powered cars. And this Alumax team, if ever a team deserves some results, I think in fairness, Bettenhausen Motorsports with Johansson probably deserve more than what they have had this year. Johansson has been so fast on so many occasions, but hasn't quite managed to put it together. Take a look at this, Emerson Fittipaldi, as finally he gets tired of sitting behind Adrian Fernandez, closes on that long straight going into corner five, climbs the hill now one position further forward. He is in sixth place now and set sights on Mario Andretti. Well, well, well. 
talk about trying to force the issue. We have not seen Emerson run that fast all weekend here. Has not been happy with his Penske, but that was a force the issue type of pass under braking to turn five. Now watch Fernandez. He begins to come across. Look at this. Wheel to wheel, and he sees him and just about gives Emerson enough room. But plenty of room. If it only was an extra inch or so for Fittipaldi to get past. Let's let's discuss for a minute, Derek, the, st the strategy, the tactics that will be played now in Penske racing. If Emerson is to keep any hope at all alive in the championship fight, he must have a podium finish. While Al Unser Jr. has to be beyond fifth place. So what will they do now? Do they want to at least get him up into a position so if? Little Al has a problem. They're going to have him close to the podium, or wouldn't you just ride him there? What would you do? They can't make a decision on what might happen. They can only make decisions on what definitely does happen. What has happened so far is Al Jr.'s ahead. That has already made the decision. If he begins to have trouble, then they may be forced to rethink things. But Penske right now will be happy to let his drivers uh, decide the outcome of the championship. Well, Paul Tracy has just crossed the 100-mile mark. There's Alessandro Zampedri out of the car and walking back after a problem here with the MyJack car that may cause us to see a full-course yellow. And, in fact, we're going to see a full-course yellow here on the 25th lap. Paul Tracy, by leading those first 25, picks up the extra point. And as a result of that, Al Unser Jr.'s magic position is now sixth or better to wrap up a championship today. We're back at Road America, Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, under a full course yellow. They still appear to be moving in speed and, in fact, are in many places as they close up behind the PPG pace car driven by Johnny Rutherford here. Paul Tracy is still the leader of the race. Al Unser Jr., though, came into the pits and changed tires. A bit of a surprise to most of us. Also, the Newman Haas cars came in. Were you surprised, Eric? I was surprised about Al Jr. Now, we're going to try and follow the story to see was it a tire checking stop that he wanted to play safe with but Tracy has not come in now remember Al Jr. made an early stop at Vancouver and it absolutely fell into his hands so perhaps he's mindful of that well let's talk to his crew chief Richard Buck Gary Gerald has him right now maybe we can find out what the thinking is Richard what's the strategy here why after just 10 laps do you bring him in for this change well, the car was a bit loose on him, and uh, as you saw before, we were pretty hard on the rear tires. We're actually kind of driving the wheels off, so to speak, but uh, it was uh, virtually like a free pit stop there. We got him in, got the fuel in it now, and that opens our window up real big for the end of the race. Uh, when the other guys are going to have to take on a full fuel load, we can go with a partial load and have a quick in and out, make, be able to pick up some good positions in. So it definitely becomes a three-stop race, but you're happy with the way this is shaking yeah. out. Yeah, it definitely opens our window up, but then, and we got a lot more options towards the end of the race. Okay, there you hear it from Richard Buck. He and Roger Penske, although he did tell us just before we did the interview, that was Roger's call all the way. Jan? <laughs> Gary, when Richard Buck said it was a free pit stop, that's the exact same thing that Newman Haas had to say. They said, hey, we can get in and out, get fresh tires, get it filled up with fuel, and we probably won't lose track position because there was enough distance between us and the next car. So they're viewing it exactly the same way that Penske called it. And as we suggested at starting, those crews there can make the critical distance difference in a victory here. And what he means by a free pit stop, the leader Tracy still has to stop. Vilnov still has to stop. So all the leading cars still have to make one more stop. That's what they mean by that free pit stop. So we continue under a full course yellow, the first of the day for Alessandro Zampedri, who pulled off with a broken gearbox. Thursday night, Army marches into Durham, North Carolina to take on superstar running back Robert Baldwin and his Duke Blue Devils as college football is continuing on here on ESPN. We're at the Texaco Haviland 200 at Road America, Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. 27 of the scheduled laps are into the record book. 50 are scheduled. Paul Tracy is the leader of the race. But now we've begun to see some interesting strategy being played here. Paul Tracy, Jacques Villeneuve has not made a stop. Alan Jr. just made one. And that opened up his options, really, at the end of the race. So here's the key now. Tracy, we know didn't stop on Villeneuve. We'll make full stops the next time. 
Unser Jr. will make a time stop. So as this race unfolds here, it may depend on what happens in the pit lane as to what the final outcome may be. Nigel Mansell, who currently runs sixth.